Okay, welcome to this video. And in this video, and in this call, what we are going to be discussing is the simplified nutrition system. And what we are going to do is we are going to go through arguably the simplest and most effective nutrition system that you could possibly lose, use. And just to let you know, there is no need to buy um, anything. I'm basically not going to sell you anything on this. There, I'm never going to sell you anything anywhere, okay? You're on the program, that's it, right? But there is some things that you will potentially need to invest in if you don't have it already. And we'll run through that to make sure, and I'll tell you exactly why, okay? But we're talking minimal. And the returns from this are going to be huge, okay? And the reason why I say they're going to be huge is for a few reasons. And the reason why we will go through very shortly, and I'll explain exactly why. But I just want to know quickly, I just want you to have a little think, and then just drop it in the comments. So... With regards to everything you've tried in the past, food-wise, what has been the thing that you found most difficult about either it's sticking to it or getting on with it or whatever it may be? What was your main frustration with everything that you've tried? And then just let me know. And then we'll talk about that a little bit before we get into it a bit further. Annika, keep them to low carbs in the evening. Okay. We'll discuss that one a little bit. Okay. We'll discuss some of that as we go in. Anyone else got any frustrations? Craving sugar? Okay. This may well solve the problem. And I say may well, because I know that it will, but it's your level of adherence that's going to dictate it. And I'll discuss a little bit more on that. Why? You sit next to chocolate at work, Sheena? Yeah. Don't sit next to chocolate at work then. What is that? Because you've got, oh yeah, you've sent pictures before. You've got like a coworker that just constantly is eating chocolate. and that. Yeah, Brilliant. That's going to help with motivation. You just punch them. Just get done for assault and then you can just be at home for a little while. Get some time off like everyone else. That's all I see this is. is a bit of a time off. In fact, I've probably worked more while we've been in, I don't like the term, but lockdown than I have overall, I reckon. I'm working seven days, doing a lot of hours, a lot of stuff in the background. You might get sacked, I don't know. Who knows? Or you might become the hero of the office if no one likes him. Who knows? But right, okay, so the simplified nutrition system, okay, it uses something, right, which some of you may well be familiar with. Some of you will have probably tried it before, but you've probably done it wrong. And the reason why I say that is because it's not uncommon. It's been bounded around quite a lot, but there is ways that people have done this and informed others to do it which is essentially just led to you failing and being super miserable okay so what i call the simplified nutrition system is because all you have to do okay is stick to some key principles which we'll go through shortly okay but i'm going to reveal what it is now okay i'm going to give you its official term da, 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 da. intermittent fasting okay so yeah some of you might have tried fasting in some capacity before you might have tried things like 5-2, and I'll discuss why 5-2 doesn't work shortly. You might have tried 16 and 8, which definitely does work when you do it right. Okay, and that's the main principle of this. And you might have tried other variations, things like one meal a day or one meal every two days, or you could have tried water fasting, dry fasting, 48-hour fasts. Some people do extended fasts. Um, obviously, for religious pur purposes, some people do uh, Ramadan, which is a different form of fasting. That's essentially a dry fast. Um, but set to your daylight periods where you don't eat. And then the night times, this is where the health problems come into it is there's a small snack followed by prayers and then a massive, massive meal of all the delicious treats. And unfortunately, that is why a lot of people from that demographic tend to have health problems along with other things, things like cooking with, you know, heavily oil-based foods and whatnot. But I'm not going to dive into that. But yeah, so there's different types of fasting out there. But if you don't do it right, you're not going to adhere to it. However, if you do it right and you do it right from the off and you adhere to the first seven days, which is what we're going to be doing or what I'm going to get you to do, it's obviously optional. I can't force you to do it, but I'm going to set a little challenge for you. Okay. And the seven day challenge that we're going to be doing, which is going to start from tomorrow. And I'm going to give you a bit of time to get prepared. So if you don't do it tomorrow, then do it from Sunday. Okay, you want to start immediately and you want to get into it while everything's fresh. 
This recording is going to be in the member site later on, so don't worry about that. I'll have it uploaded tomorrow afternoon latest. Okay, we're going to do a seven-day challenge based off of this. And the reason why is because for some people who have trained with me in the past, um, we do the five and seven. And so those who stick to it um, can expect to lose sort of five pounds in seven days not by any sort of crazy magic or myths. It's just because it does some things to your body which are very good, okay? But the first question that you're probably going to be thinking is, well, if someone who doesn't like fads and if someone who's massively against fads is recommended what people would suggest as a fad, why are they doing a fad? Why are they telling me to do a fad? And fad diets don't work, so is it a fad? And, well, you have to remember that intermittent fasting is not a diet, okay? Your diet is whatever you eat. So if you eat crap, okay, you have a crap diet. If you eat good, you have a good diet. You can't go on a diet. You can change your diet and you can change the way you look at nutrition, but you cannot go on or come off a diet unless you just don't eat, unless you are literally born and then you start eating. And then even during the process of being created in the womb, you're still eating. So really it's impossible to not be on some form of diet and having a diet. Okay. So the term diet, I don't like to use, okay? I prefer different nutrition protocols, but obviously most people associate that with diet. I don't care. F what does fad stand for? Sorry if obvious. Okay, so something that's a fad is something that is around short term. So usually celebrity endorsed, or it could be something that just comes into the news um, and then people try it and they feel like it's going to be a good fix for them because someone has endorsed it. Someone who has a bit of, you know, so-called authority. So usually fad diets are started by people who are celebrities or celebrity trainer. Okay. That's what a fad diet is. Does that clear that up? I hope that clears it up for you. I think that cleared it up. Cool. Does it stand for some? No, it doesn't stand for anything. It's not, it's not like an acronym or anything. Fad is like faddy. So if something's a fad, then it's something that is around short term. A lot of people do it like a craze. Fad is another term for a craze. Okay, but no. Intermittent fasting is not a fad. It is not a diet. Okay, it's not something that you hop on. All it is, is it's manipulation of eating within set time windows. But the benefits of that are plentiful. And I'm going to explain why. And we're going to go into the science at a basic level so you understand that I'm not talking absolute crap. But in fact, it does work. And I'll explain why it works and what the benefits are as you go through as well. And why I call it the simplified nutrition system rather than intermittent fasting. I call it intermittent fasting because I don't want to scare people. Because if I said to you, oh, look, we're going to do intermittent fasting. We'd be like, no, nah, tried fasting, not into it. It didn't work for me. <clears throat> okay, but honestly, it'll work. And I'll run through exactly how it's going to work. And then from there, we're going to action it. Okay. And what I'd like you to do is over at least the first seven days. So between tomorrow, for example, as I mentioned before, you're going to do it. Okay. I'm going to give you all the tools, all the steps that you need. Okay. And very shortly by tomorrow, I will even give you a step-by-step -step guide, like a, like a cheat sheet for it. So you know that everything that you're doing is the right thing. <coughs> Excuse me. And obviously when this is finished and we're all done for today, like I said, I'll have this recorded so you can go back in. And it'll be in the member site so you can watch back through it again. All right. So let's move on. Okay. So the principles of intermittent fasting. All right. So there's a few key principles. But so the first thing that you have to look at right here, okay, is you'll see these two bars. Okay. So you've got insulin response regular. Okay. And then you've got insulin response during fasting. And a lot of people might be like, I don't know what insulin is. Don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> What insulin responses do between regular eating, so when you eat all throughout the day, versus when you fast, is essentially fasting causes your insulin response to smooth out. And if you imagine this is panic, okay, and this is calm, right? So all along the bottom here, this is calm. And everyone wants calm. You want your body to be calm, okay? But at the same time, you want it to be doing what you want it to do. And so it does this in the way that you eat, okay? So if you can imagine, okay, as you go along, all right, so leading up to this point, okay, on most diets here, okay, you wake up in the morning, you have a meal, okay, then you drop off and eat a little bit later, then you drop off, then you have your lunch, you drop off and you carry on like that all throughout the day, and you get this massive peak in your insulin, 
which means that your sugar levels go mega high, okay, and then straight afterwards you crash, okay, and every time they peak, okay, something good or something bad can happen within the body. As soon as they crash, something good or something bad can happen within the body, and it repeats this process all the time. And so if we can smooth it out by using something like uh, timed eating habits, okay, so using principles like intermittent fasting, okay, we can smooth it out a little bit. And the way that we smooth it out is by doing a couple of things, which I'll talk through a bit more. But this is the basic principle. The, so the initial principle behind intermittent fasting. We got that? Cool. So in order to understand that, we need to know a little bit more about what the benefits are. Okay, so here's just a list of benefits and I'll give you the opportunity to just read through. And then as I'm going through, okay, you can obviously take it in. If you want to write them down, you can do, absolutely. So generally, the way that I like people to do it, okay, and this is dependent on your ability to stick to it. And this is why I say do it for seven days because it takes anywhere between five and nine days for your body, you get, for your body sorry, to get into it anyway. It doesn't happen overnight where your body adapts, okay? And so the general rule of thumb is people will do 16 hours of fasting followed by eight hours of eating, okay? So they do 16 hours where they fast, okay? And we'll talk about the difference between fasting and eating periods, okay? For women, however, because of your hormones and because of what your body is grown to do over time, the way it's evolved is huge levels of hunger can kick in much earlier for women. It can be almost ridiculous when you first get into it for a few reasons, and I want to tell you this straight off the bat. You may well get hungry because your body gets nervous when it doesn't have a lot of food, okay? And if it gets nervous without having a lot of food, then obviously it wants to be fed. And the reason why it wants to be fed is because your body, you are here on earth to produce a child, okay? There is no other reason for humans, just like any other animal, than to just breed and grow or to become extinct. So the, as I say, the survival of the fittest, okay? So going back to a primal level, the purpose behind the hunger signal is because your body wants you to eat. But what fasting also does is it removes the hunger signal and teaches you that actually I don't need that signal all of the time. Because you may notice if you followed a diet where you've ate every couple of hours <clears throat> before it gets to the point. So let's say you have breakfast at eight and you know you're going to eat again at half 10. You'll get to like 10 o'clock and you'll be really hungry because you just became used to eating at half 10, then when it gets near 12, you're gonna get hungry before you've even ate. And that's only a couple of hours. So we can curb the hunger issues and we can curb the cravings of sugar and things like that by just limiting our eating periods, okay? And then the second principle of why fasting is so useful as a tool and why we could practice it at least over a short period and see the benefits is because of hormone regulation. Okay, so there's two key hormones that we want to have involved in this process, okay? So we want the hormones with, that are involved in the metabolism of fat, so using the fat within the body, and then we want the hormones working that are going to be used for essentially repairing the body and delivering energy throughout the body as well, okay? So we want these two main areas of hormones to be doing their job, okay? And this hormone regulation comes from fasting, because during your fasted period, okay, there's only one hormone which is going on for an extended period of time. And you get the most benefits from it from a minimum of 16 hours. But like I said before, for women, unfortunately, the hunger signal can be so much that you can't stretch to 16 at the start and you have to go to 14 or maybe even 12 and slowly coax yourself into it. Okay. The third principle is the fact that it's going to make you feel full. And the reason why it's going to make you feel full is after a period of time, the hunger signal goes away. And the clever bit about how we do the fasting and how we do it successfully is how I'm going to show you soon. Okay. But following the principles of intermittent fasting, okay, you can actually feel less hungry. Then when it comes to your eating period, you'll feel so full that you'll be like, well, that was really easy. I can do that over and over again because I've spent all this time where I've not ate and then I've ate loads and I feel like I'm eating so much, but I'm still losing weight because of course it's an excellent tool for losing weight. And I'll explain a little bit about that in a bit. Next of all, so if you're someone who is under high pressure or you do a lot of heavy thinking, or you're just someone who feels like you'd lack an energy a lot of the time, it's going to increase your level of mental alertness because when you're in a fasted period, your body goes into a small state of panic because it's like, Oh, where's my food? 
Okay. And that can really sharpen you up. It can get rid of a couple of things. It can stop you from having your mind wander and it can really make you focus on everything that you should be doing at the time and not worry about the other bits. Okay. So it's really good for moods as well. Okay. The next one is because of the way that it works and because of the way the hormones work with the smoothing of insulin and the extended period of not eating, then it will increase fat metabolism. Now I'm not saying that it's a wonder principle to follow. It's not going to change the world. Okay. But it does have an element of acceleration for fat metabolism. Okay. So burning fat. So it does have that benefit too. The main thing for me though, is the fact that it provides structure. So if you're someone that feels like you just snack all the time because you don't really have an understanding of when you should be eating and when I shouldn't be eating and whatnot, if you just say, look, I, I can only eat between, for example, 2 and 10 p.m. or it could be, you know, 8 in the morning through till uh, 4 in the afternoon, however you set it up, then you can eat just as much through that time. In fact, a lot of studies have compared the difference between people having um, set calories. So it was 2,000 calories in one and 2,500 calories in another study. And in one study, and they both mimicked them in the different studies. Okay, one group, so the, the fasting group was given the 2,000 calories, but they only ate that in the eight-hour window. And then the, the control group was given the same amount of calories, but they could eat that whenever they want. And what they found was even though they had the same amount of calories going in, okay, where they were maintaining their, their level of calories that they need not to lose weight or gain weight, but the ones who were following the fasting principles actually lost weight in the sense of they lost more body fat and gained more muscle over that time which is perfect okay that's body recomposition so it's decreasing muscle uh, it's decreasing fat levels and it's increasing muscle mass and that's hugely important because the more muscle mass we have in our body the more calories we burn at rest meaning the more we can enjoy other foods and so the main thing about what we're trying to do is build a little bit of extra mu muscle which means that we have a better shape it means that we have more energy. It means that our bodies are more efficient. It also means we can eat more because we burn more calories at rest. So all of these are all benefits and it's all going to help with that as well. It also becomes sustainable. So after you five to seven or somewhere between sort of, it could be for some people, it could be one or two days and you're all good. For some people, it can be up to nine days. But once you've adjusted to it, it's hugely sustainable. For me, for example, I don't like breakfast and never had. And a lot of people have this misconception that you have to have breakfast because it's the most important meal of the day. But when you break down the term breakfast, all it means is breaking the fast. So if your first meal was at lunchtime, that's still breakfast. It's still breaking the fast. And when I show you the foods that you should be eating at these times to maximize the amount of progress you can make and guarantee five pounds of weight loss over seven days sustainably without starving yourself and legitimately feel all of the benefits above, and you get into this sustainable rhythm, this could be something that you could apply long-term without any real issues, like almost zero issues, because most people, like I said before, like for myself, for example, and for many others, they don't like breakfast. So don't demonize the fact you don't like breakfast, embrace it and use it to work around that. And you can make huge amounts of process, uh, progress. Next of all, it's super simple, because as I mentioned before with those studies, if you ate the same amount of calories over a day versus in a set window, okay, the studies have shown that those who were eating that only in a set window still decreased the levels of body fat in the body and still increased muscle mass over that time, even though they were at maintenance calories. So they still made changes over that. So if you were in a slight calorie deficit, okay, following a simple principle, which I'm going to show you where you don't have to count calories, then the simplicity is there and you get all of the above benefits. Okay, and then finally, number 10, there's a lot of health benefits. Now, they haven't been peer-reviewed, and what that means is you haven't had a study that's been compared against another study with masses of control groups and huge amounts of money put into it, but the studies have been done, and there have been elements done to great success over the long term where people who have things like type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure have found that their health problems have been completely removed by following intermittent fasting principle, principles. And I'm not qualified to go into the reasons why, but there are plenty of people out there who can. Okay. And there's a couple of people who are around on the internet who are qualified to talk about that. And if you want to know a little bit more and learn from someone who, who's literally dedicated their life to this, okay, you could search someone called Thomas DeLauer. Okay. So T H O M O S D E L A U R on YouTube and 
pretty much all he does is talk about keto and talks about intermittent fasting. I'm not saying you don't have to do keto. For me, it's not sustainable, so I would never do that. I would never say to anyone do that, but I would suggest to someone to try fasting, okay, because of all the health benefits that are there. Even if you don't have things like diabetes and high blood pressure, it can still help regulate it. It can improve your health, okay? So there are all these things that you can get from it. And so how it's done is through this. So here's an example day of eating and what it would look like. And I'll explain a little bit more about it shortly. And by all means, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat and I'll talk through it. Okay, don't be scared. Ask the questions. Is eight missing? Let me go back. Oh, my bad. Yeah, no, there was never an eight. I think there was nine anyway. My bad, typo. Nah. Sorry, well picked up though. Um, anyway, thanks for pointing that out. Completely threw me off track. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, right, so <laughs> lawyers, that's <laughs> nah, all right. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Just don't sue us though, yeah? Um, <laughs> okay, so here's an example day of eating, and I'm actually showing you exactly how I eat, okay? And I do this if I want to get in good shape. So through the winter, I'm not too bothered because we're all human and we like to eat nice foods throughout the, throughout the winter months. But in the summer, we also like to look good for the beach and when we go on holiday and when we spend time with tops off and sunbathing and stuff like that. And so <clears throat> even though I eat like this pretty much all the time, I dial my food into this very specific way and I'll explain all of it as to why and why I do it this way as well, okay? So when I do fasting, and again, this is my example, okay? When I do fasting, I fast, okay, from 10 p.m. at night through till 2 p.m., in the afternoon. So somewhere between half one and 2 p.m. is when I break my fast. When I'm in my fasted state, okay, you'll see here, the only thing that I will consume is water and black coffee or tea with no sugar, no milk, no supplements. If you have to take medicine for, um, for health reasons, I'm not talking like paracetamol, but if you have medications that have to be taken and they need to be taken at this time, or at set times in the day, then obviously take it. But ideally, the only thing that enters your mouth is set fl certain fluids, okay? So water and black coffee and tea. And the reason why black coffee and tea, and it doesn't matter about green tea, if you like it, have it, but green tea and regular tea are just as good, okay? And I explained about this last week on, on the effects of um, black coffee and tea as a essential natural fat burner and also increases energy. So the water and the black coffee and tea what it'll do is it's going to do a few things. It'll give you a little energy kick. It's going to make you feel full. Also, the caffeine is a thermogenic in the sense that it naturally f makes your body metabolize more fat. So, okay, so when you drink the coffee, okay, it's going to burn some more calories, All right? That's the simplest way of putting it. So throughout that period, all I will drink is water, black coffee, and tea. No sugar, no milk. There are some people that say you can have diet pop, Okay, if you're going to have diet pop, they do recommend it's with natural sweeteners and a lot of them don't have that in. It's up to you if you want to do it. For me, I just keep it simple and I just say, look, water and black coffee and tea only. Okay, and if you had it like a zero sugar squash, I suppose you can get away with that too. Once I get to two o'clock, the, the most important thing, okay, is that the meal is small and I'll explain all of this here and what it means. So in the fasted period, your gut becomes slightly weakened okay so there's a, almost like a, an oil like a fluid that lines the inside of your stomach okay so the, st the wall of the stomach okay and it becomes it starts to deteriorate ever so slightly and there's nothing wrong with that your body does it all the time anyway but your stomach becomes quite weak and so when it gets to two o'clock the first meal that you need to have okay should only contain a little bit of protein okay should only contain a little bit of protein and something like some fruit, just a small meal, just to imagine it more like waking up your digestive system. Once you've done that, the other things you'll have to take, and this is optional, but I have done a video on supplements and it's in the member site. And in the future, if you haven't watched it already, I definitely recommend watching it on why they're important. Okay, so I will have two omega-3 capsules for the essential fatty acids. I'll have a multivitamin. And I'll have between two and a half and 5,000 IUs of vitamin D, which is around about two vitamin D tablets. Okay, and all of these serve together to maximize everything that you've done in this period here. 
So when you break your fast, you have a little bit of protein and a little bit of fruit. Okay, and these supplements further help with that. And this here, over a month, will literally cost you about six quid. Tops. Okay, you don't need to buy the most expensive brand. Own brand products are absolutely good enough for this job. You don't need anything crazy. You just need own brand omega-3s, any multivitamin, as long as it reaches the recommended daily allowance, okay, and any vitamin D supplement. Your omega-3 could either be in liquid gel tab form or it could just be regular, but I don't think anyone has it with a spoon. I think you'd have to be crazy to do that. And then the multivitamin, what that does is it bridges the gap with everything that you will be missing because it doesn't matter how good your nutrition is, you're always going to be lacking in some multivitamin, oh, sorry, vitamins and minerals. And so all it does is it just picks up the slack. It's not, it's not going to be a wonder drug, but if you want your body to be super good at essentially burning fat, dropping dress sizes, inches and pounds, you want it to be efficient and you want to do it smoothly. You want to minimize the negative effects that you have on yourself. You want to feel better and having all these vitamins and minerals in your body as a supplement, along with the rest of the food that you should be eating, is going to make you feel great. Okay. So that's the premise behind these supplements here. Okay. So all you need is about six quid's worth. And you can pick these up, like I said, from pretty much any supermarket. If you want to spend a bit more, go to Holland and Barrett and get a small loan to get them. But own brand is fine. Okay. And then you have to wait. Once you broke your fast with your meal, you have to wait a couple of hours. You need your digestive system to calm down. And you're not going to be mega hungry at this point. If you think you are, you haven't tried it yet, but trust us, you won't be hungry. You'll have this. Okay. Here then you'll be absolutely fine. But then after that, I'll have two meals which pretty much match each other. So this is how I do it. And I'll show you exactly what the portions will look like slightly later on in this. Just showing you an example here. So two to three portions of vegetables, two portions of lean protein, one portion of starchy carbohydrates. Okay. You don't want to have any fat in here, not because fat is bad. Again, if you want to learn more about fat, it's in the member site. Have a look at why fat is in there, why we need fat for things like hormones, etc. We've even had fat here. So if we've had fat here from the omega-3s, how can I say that fat's bad? It's not bad. It's just that to optimize your journey and to make your meals as simple as possible, because remember, this is a simple nutrition system. A couple of portions of vegetables, a couple of portions of lean protein, and a portion of starchy carbs. And yeah, that sounds really bland, but think about it this way, okay? There's so many variations of vegetable, so many variations of lean protein sources, whether you are carnivorous, so you eat meat, or whether you're a vegetarian or plant-based uh, or a vegan, okay? You've got all these different options for your protein sources. And then starchy carbohydrates, exactly the same again. You've got so many different options. So you can make thousands of different recipes from that. And then all you have to do is get some nice seasonings and things like that. I, I use um, salt and pepper seasoning a lot at the moment, like they use for the Chinese um, takeaways, as in the salt and pepper chicken and spare ribs and stuff. Like I literally have one of them that I use for the chicken and I put it on the other stuff and then I add some soy sauce and I basically just have Chinese every day and lose weight. Like you can't lose. And that's that, like, you can make delicious meals by just doing a simple principle. And again, we'll talk a bit more about portions very shortly. Okay. So we'll have our one to two meals, okay? If you struggle with eating this amount of food, that's understandable, okay? But we'll talk about portions in a second. But if you only can have one meal here, one meal here, and then your last meal, which I'm going to talk about now, then that's fine. You can adapt to it because I want you to be feeling so full during the eight hours that you almost wish that you were fasting because then it'll make you feel good. You'll be like, how am I losing weight when I'm feeling so full? And then I don't feel hungry when I'm fasting because I'm doing it only having water, black coffee and tea. And then when I break my fast, I have it in a certain way so it doesn't affect my stomach. And then I have these simple meals that taste delicious. Like Bobby's having like a, Ch a Chinese every day, like twice a day. And then it gets to like half nine-ish, somewhere between nine and 10 <clears throat> will be my last meal. <coughs> Excuse me. And all that has to be is just a little bit of protein and some carbs. So this could be, I don't know, like eggs on toast or something like that. And all it does is it just helps smooth the body out, ready to go back into a fasted state. You've got a little bit of carbs in there to power you through. Bearing in mind, this is not far off going to bedtime-ish, even if you go to bed like 12, 1. So the benefit of doing this where I leave my eating window, because I'm a nighttime snacker, but I don't like breakfast. So I push my fasting time to like 2 p.m. Then that means that there's no reason why I can't eat all the way till 10. 
Then I'm so full from eating all of this that when it gets to 10, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I don't need to eat anything, which means that it's so simple. I literally do not want to snack. There is no interest in snacking whatsoever. And I can do this This is why I said it's like sustainable forever. Once you get into it, honestly, like I said, I, I can't sell anything to you. I'm not pushing anything, but I urge you to do this for seven days and just try it. Okay. And we'll talk about all of this a little bit more. So here's your portions and this is what they look like just so you get a good idea and I'll break down why they're important. Okay. So if you're having a portion of vegetables or you two to three portions of vegetables, okay, this is how much you'll have. So already look at how much food you have in like an ungodly amount of food. Okay. Then you have your starchy carbs. Okay. So you have a portion of that again, that's a large amount of carbs. Okay. When you can't combine those two together. Okay. That's an ungodly amount of food. Again, most people won't be able to eat that much. Then on top, you're going to add your protein. Then you might even have some fruit as well. And you have a little bit of fats too. And some of your meals. And you'll see here, the thumb is the amount that you should be having. Okay. With your meals. And this breaks it down perfectly. And I've explained it a little bit more below. Okay. So you, your vegetables here and your fruit here, they provide your micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals or the majority of them. So the water soluble ones. So vitamins B and C. Okay. And these are massively important and you need them every day. If you don't have them every day, your body's going to be deficient, which means that you are going to not be as good at burning fat as you could be. So it doesn't matter what vegetables you like and what fruit you like and what you don't like, you just need to have them. And then you're going to get the benefit that combined with your multivitamin, you're good to go. Next, you need to be having your carbohydrates. There's no point going zero carb for most people. It doesn't work and people like carbs. So just have them. Have it as part of your meal, okay? But just don't go crazy, okay? So you can have yourself like a nice, like a nice big fist of, of carbs, okay? Then on top of that, you have your recovery element, okay? So the protein here. So you have like two portions. So that's two palms of protein. That's a lot of meat. That's a lot of protein. Or if you're, if you're a veggie or a vegan, that's a lot of like tofu or tempeh or edamame or whatever you're having you know it's a lot that's a lot of food to have and so again you'll be like how can i eat all this food and lose weight but honestly you can like to put it into perspective i've sort of cleaned up my diet now and in order to hashtag get ready for summer and it doesn't mean much to most people but i'm 10 pounds down in like a week because your body just sorts itself out it clears out everything it doesn't need not like as in you need to go to the toilet every two minutes but you, your gut health becomes healthier. You become more awake. You become more active. You're eating more. Your body's more efficient. So like I said, I mean, I've lost 10 pounds. And literally, I started on Monday morning, and it's Friday night. And I've lost 10 pounds. Went from 89.6 kilograms, and I'm now 86.5, 85.5. I'll double check that. So yeah, that's like 10, 11 pounds by just letting my body do its thing, okay? And I feel great. Trust is, if you've tried it and you've done it wrong, okay, you'll be hesitant. But like I said, we're doing it for seven days. Or if you want to do it, do it for seven days. But I urge you to try it and do it properly. And this is why I'm doing it as such a simple method because you can't go wrong. And it's cheap. It's so cheap to do it. Okay, so that's the portions part. And I hope that sort of balances everything out. But if you have any questions on it, ask. All right. Again, I'm always here to ask questions too. Okay, whenever you have a question, just ask. All right, so there's your portions element done there. And then finally, you got the caffeine part. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the caffeine is going to be monumental. Just don't have it once you once you go back into your fastest state, don't have it at night, otherwise you won't be sleeping. Okay, but the caffeine is hugely important for your journey. All right, and that's pretty much the whole system, to be honest. That's like the whole thing done. And that's how easy you can do it. And like I said, with this, if you do it over seven days, you're looking like a minimum of five pounds weight loss. And all you have to do on top of that to guarantee it is you start doing your daily activities. So 20 minutes of walking, you do like exercise 30, 45 minutes tops, you know, three, four times a week if you want, but three times a week is absolutely fine. And you're going to lose five pounds, like five pounds. People struggle to do that over a month and you can do that comfortably in a week, feel great and know that you can be pretty consistent. Like you can do this. As I said, you can do this month after month. Week after week, you could you could literally walk away from here, and if you applied this, then you're all good. Okay, I promise you. That's it. 